Hey, my YouTube friends, welcome back. For the past two weeks, I'll be using these two Surface Laptop 7s side by side. The Qualcomm Snapdragon X chip versus the Intel Luna Lake chip. So after two weeks of head-to-head -head comparison, I compared the battery life, I compared the CPU performance or the overall machine performance, also compared the application compatibility, I compared from the screens to the disks. Now I have a fairly good idea on the strengths on each platform. If you are looking for a Surface laptop or in general, just any Windows laptop, you haven't decided if you should go with the Snapdragon versus the Intel one, like the traditional x86 chips, don't miss this video. You'll get a very good idea after watching this video. The Snapdragon one, this one has a Snapdragon X Plus CPU, has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it has a 256 gigabyte of SSD. And the Intel one, this one has Intel Core Ultra 7 266V. It has 22 gigabytes of RAM, and it has a two terabyte SSD that I upgraded by myself. First, the design and build quality of the two laptops. If you watched my last video, I opened the inside of these laptops and showed the small differences between the CPU cooler and the differences between the two Wi-Fi cards, the two de devices have been using. But other than that, there are really not too much of a difference between these two. I have this little sticker here, the Black Myth Ocon game sticker on the Intel Lunar Lake one, so that we can differentiate these two very alike machines in throughout the video. So a big change on the Intel Lunar Lake Surface Laptop 7 is on the screen. The screens are the same resolution, same brightness, but on the Intel one, the Surface Laptop 7 for business, they have applied this anti-glare coating. This coating is very noticeable and very important, especially you're working on some bright environment. The differences are pretty noticeable and you appreciate the anti-glare coating on this one. The screen on the Surface Laptop 7 business, the Intel one is really great. Even though it's still glossy, even though it is still kind of reflective, but the usability of the screen is really improved a lot just by adding this anti-glare coating. I even think by the screen upgrade alone, that would justify like moving from the Snapdragon one to the Intel one. Next, the CPU performance. I run the two machines on Geekbench 6, both on plug-in and battery conditions. As you can see from the result, the Intel one has 2301 single core score and 8232 multi-core score. And you can see some significant improvement on the performance on, um, on plug-in condition. We got 2660 single core score and about 10701 um, multiple core score. And this is kind of the thing for Intel or in general x86 CPUs, there is a discrepancy between plug-in and battery. However, if you look at the Snapdragon ones, the ARM-based Surface Laptop 7, and uh, I run these two scores on two different conditions as compared to the Intel. I run them on plug-in and on battery. You can see the scores are actually pretty close. It rocks a 2,307 single core score and the multi-core score is 12,301 is much higher than the Intel Lunar Lake. So we can fairly say that the Snapdragon X Elite or X Plus has a uh, relatively close or the same single core score as the Intel Lunar Lake uh, Core Ultra 7 or Ultra 5. There's, there are just like t five to 10% differences between these different tiers like Core Ultra 5 and Core Ultra 7 and, and Snapdragon X Plus and Snapdragon X Elite. But the multi-core multi score, the Snapdragon ones, are much higher. And the CPU performance scores on battery as well as on plug-in conditions are pretty consistent on the Snapdragon one. You won't notice significant differences when performing daily tasks, but if your workflow can leverage the multiple core from the CPU, you will notice some differences that the Snapdragon ones are faster than Intel Lunar Lake one, no matter their plug-in or on battery condition. Hi, this is the camera and microphone test for Surface Laptop 7 Qualcomm Edition. Let me know how you think about the image quality and audio quality. Hi, this is the camera and microphone test for Surface Laptop 7 Business. Let me know how you think the image quality and the audio quality. So the 256 gigabyte SSD is the original like OEM SSD that comes with the Surface Laptop 7. And the two terabyte one, I got this um, Western, Di Western Digital SSN 770. This one, this two terabyte SSD, it's, way, it's, it's much faster, it has higher capacity. For anyone who's buying this uh, Surface Laptops, I recommend you to buy the lowest tier uh, SSD 
and then just to upgrade the SSD by yourself. There are tons of options from Amazon. You can choose any standard 2230 standard uh, M2 SSD to upgrade that. It's very easy to open this uh, chassis of the Surface laptop. I have posted a video to share how to upgrade the SSD and also like install the system, the Windows 11 back to the Surface laptop. If you're interested, check out that video as well. You can really benefit from the improved performance of the upgraded SSD. Not only that the size, the disk size is increased to one terabyte or two terabyte, you also got the increased performance. This is especially important if the RAM size is not uh, enough for your daily workload. Like if you have a 16 gigabyte of RAM on your Surface laptop or on your any Windows laptop, you can really benefit from the SSD speed. I think one of the biggest drawback of this Intel Lunar Lake chip, as good as it is, it does only support maximum of 32 gigabyte of uh, RAM size. Okay, in terms of the thermals and fan noise, I would say both of these machines are very quiet. I would say the Intel Lunar Lake chips are stepping up by a lot from its predecessors. It's mostly stay quiet and cool for the daily tasks you would ever use. And the ARM one, the Qualcomm Snapdragon one, these are running even cooler than the Intel ones and will show uh, the battery performance in just a bit. So battery test, a very important test I wanna run on these two laptops are the battery test. I want to simulate the real day-to-day -day use like uh, office applications and web browsing and mix it with watching videos as well as maybe some coding. I went through a few of the standard battery benchmark tests. Uh, one of them is like PC Mark 10 and a few others. The PC Mark 10 for reviewers, it asks over $1,000 per year for lessons. For a small channel like mine, I don't wanna pay them over $1,000 a year to test the battery performance. So I coded my own battery benchmark. It calls the Bison Bass battery benchmark. I have successfully built this battery benchmark that can simulate a user using office applications, web browsing, watching videos, and coding. I also installed the same softwares on both of the PCs that I commonly use in my day-to-day -day workflow just to simulate a normal use case that there might be some process running from the backend that consume a little portion of the battery. You know what? Even in this kind of task, the Intel One, the Surface Laptop 7 for business, rocks a eight hour and 15 minutes battery use time. And these are like real usage on the laptops. And the Qualcomm Snapdragon one is even more impressive. It runs for over nine hours, 50 minutes before the system finally shuts down. ARM chips are so efficient for in so many ways, but the Intel Lunar Lake one is still very good battery performer. It can last the whole day for your workload, for your use case. I did test some games on the Intel one. I know many media are saying that this generation of the Intel chip, the GPU performance has improved a lot from last generation. I tested the AAA game uh, Black Myth Wukong on this one. Even though I set the resolution to full HD and set the image quality to low or medium, I still get very few frames. And that's after enabling the frame generation. And there are so many artifacts that the game is barely playable. Even though the uh, GPU performance is improved on this generation, this is definitely not a gaming laptop. If you were, like, really want to play AAA games or um, play games with the laptop a lot, just buy a gaming laptop or maybe buy a gaming PC. For games like CS2, I did also run some tests. I can get around 60 frames on 2K resolution, but the frames are not very stable. Again, you have to lower the resolution or lower the image quality to get higher frames. Uh, it's playable, but definitely not for serious gamers. So conclusion, the Intel version Surface Laptop 7 for business, it has better screen because of the anti-glare coding. It has better application compatibility. If you're a programmer or you're working on some projects, needs the compatibility from x86 chips, you don't have too much choice. You have to go with the Surface Laptop 7 for business. But if you don't need the compatibility for the x86 programs or apps, the Snapdragon X Elite one, this one has better battery performance. It lasts longer and it has the same single core CPU performance and a much better multi-core CPU performance. And also this one, if you need, 
you can buy a up to 64 gigabytes of memory on this one, but you can't do that on any Intel Loon Lake laptops because the Intel Loon Lake, this generation, it caps at 32 gigabytes of RAM, if that's important to you. Both of these machines have perfect build quality and I like, absolutely like the design of these laptops, the Surface Laptop 7. I think this is the only laptop in the Windows world that has the same level of design and build quality as the Mac series, like MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. I know there are a lot of premium laptops out there in the Windows world, but this is the best build quality in my opinion for a Windows laptop.